Hello, everybody! Welcome back to another episode of Friday the 13th The Game Virtual Cabin. I'm your host, Mada Yokai, and tonight we are going to finish the mystery behind the Virtual Cabin for Friday the 13th The Game. I have discussed the demonic rune board over several videos, and tonight we're going to finish the puzzle. So we're going to start off with no runes, and I'm going to walk you through each room as we uncover the runes and unlock the mystery. So, if you guys want to solve this for yourself, I totally understand. It's a great puzzle, and I don't want to leave any spoilers. But, you know, if you want to solve it, go ahead. Come back to this video for reference later if you want. And if you want to see what happens, definitely stay till the end. Use the timestamps below in the description if you want to skip around. But let's have a good time. So, first thing we're going to do, we're going to check out the bathroom. And, whoa, it's a bit of a mess. Dang. Alright, so clearly Jason Voorhees had a party in here. He just killed someone in the shower and, well, hid their body somewhere. I have no idea. Doubt the body's in here. But the fact they have this bloody mess, there's no body, it makes me wonder if Jason Voorhees in the game can actually lift up camp counselors and maybe stow them away in either a cabinet or a hiding spot. You know, if you want to set up an ambush and kill some counselors and make sure they don't find, you know, your dirty work, moving bodies might be a pretty cool idea. I don't know if it's a feature in the game. That'd be pretty sweet. All right, so that's the bloody mess. And, oh, before I forget, I have to congratulate Charmin Xsoft on making it into the virtual cabin. So Charmin Xsoft, if you are listening, congratulations, man. You deserve the success. You've done so much great work on finding all the movie references to Friday the 13th and the Virtual Cabin, so kudos to you. For those of you who don't know, Charmin Xsoft is a YouTuber. He specializes in various games from Star Wars to Friday the 13th and also indie horror games. He's a really cool guy. He's given me great advice with regards to starting up the YouTube channel, and we've been talking for a couple months now. He's really cool. So if you want to watch his content and get a good laugh or two, you know, he's definitely someone to check out. So Charmin... Congratulations, man. You deserve the success. I hope to one day reach your level of success in the YouTube world. So kudos to you, man. Kudos to you. Alright, so that's that. That's my shadow form. And let's talk about the puzzle now. So we have this bloody shirt on the ground. If we get it centered just right, we will unlock one of the bloody moon runes. There we go. Alright, now if you hear a click, that means a bloody moon rune has been unlocked. Now before we go on, I just want to point out two cool functions. First of all, we can flush the toilet. It's pretty sweet. And also we've got this little locker, or cabinet right here, with med spray inside. Now I have a feeling the developers wanted to show people the various rooms in the virtual cabin because this is what one of the cabins will look like in the game. Now, the cabins are spawned randomly. All of the rooms and layouts are different, so you can't memorize escape routes. You have to explore and decide in that moment what you, to do. And also, you can search around. So, for example, you can open up this drawer right here, and you can search for items. You can open it, you can close it. So, you may get lucky, you may find an item, you may find a weapon, or you could find a Pamela tape, which would make me very happy. And you can also find items in these locked cabinets. So that's the bathroom. Now before I go on to the kitchen, I just want to prove to you guys that yes, we have unlocked a bloody moon rune. Alright, so that's one tick on our demonic board. Now, on to the kitchen. Here we go. Alright, so here's the kitchen. A couple things I want to point out. One. We have this weird cabinet thing here, and I have no idea what it is. I think it's a cabinet, but it's just so strange we have this little peephole. You know, I don't know if that's where a door knob is supposed to go or what, but it would be really cool if we could hide in these tall cabinets in the game and maybe peep out through this peephole and see if Jason or anyone is coming in through the door. But if Jason catches you inside here, you're probably going to die in one hit because you're stuck. So that's one thing that caught my attention. 
We have this bulletin board here, but it's hard to read the text, and I don't know if it has anything to do with the game, or maybe some references to the film. But one thing I know for sure is that this stood out like a sore thumb, or this stuck out like a sore thumb, wherever the expression goes. This says, Unger Institute of Mental Health. Now, I had to really stare at my screen for a while to get this, and the game won't zoom in on the text as much as I want it to, but what it says here is, Patient suffers from severe night terrors and is delusional. I don't know if this is referring to Pamela Voorhees. Or I'm, I'm looking at this again, hold on. Or actually, now I look at it again, I think it says Tommy Jarvis. Which would make a lot of sense, because Tommy Jarvis was suffering from night terrors and was starting to see things after his first encounter with Jason Voorhees when he was a child. So I think this is a movie reference to Friday the 13th Part 5, which is when Tommy Jarvis comes back into the film series and he starts recovering from his encounter with Jason back in Part 4. So I think this is movie reference... And if it's not, then this could be referring to a different character, but I'm pretty sure the text reads Tommy Jarvis on the top of the document. So that's that. You can turn on the water here. And I love how you can interact with different items in the cabin. That's so cool. We also have this really creepy calendar. I'm pretty sure this is also a movie reference. And the reason why I say this is creepy is that, one, it's a cabin in the woods, just like the one we're in right now, and it says... Baith Baithorn or Baton Chainsaw. I think that's his chainsaw. You know, the, the print is really small, and I've cranked up my resolution to max, so I'm doing the best I can. But just the fact it says Baton Chainsaw, and you got this creepy cabin just gives me the, the heebie-jeebies, man. It just creeps me out. We got God's Boxing Gym, movie reference, not sure which film. We have Look Out for the Locomotive, and we have some items right here. Now, you can interact with this frying pan, and this took forever to activate. I was staring at this for a long time, and finally I got it right. Gosh, I love these sound effects. They're so cool! Alright, so that's that. Oh, and also, if you want to get some action in the game, maybe get some caffeine, you can either drink Spike, which is clearly the reference to Sprite, but, you know, you don't want to get sued, and some Coda. So Coda or Spike, choose your energy drink or soft drink, and let the good times roll on Friday the 13th. So that's the bathroom and the kitchen. And I'll show you our demonic room board once more. To prove, we have two demonic red ticks. So the 8 has lit up, and so has this Twitter mark. It looks like a tweet mark. Yeah. So that's that. Now the one bloody moon rune that can be unlocked in this main area of the cabin is thanks to this phone. If I zoom in, in just right. There we go. Hello, Camp Crystal Lake. Ma'am? Ma'am? Hello? Alright, that's one less camp or a camp council for Camp Crystal Lake this summer. Yikes. Okay. We go back to our bloody moon rune board. And that's three. We got a line going so far. Alright, so that's the main area. We can go into the council room next. Let's go activate these pieces. So, pardon my language, but we're gonna go to the Jimmy is a dead fuck reference down on this log. There we go. There we go. That's that one. Ooh, and this is a cool reference right here. Sharma Nexoff found this one. 
Wolfman has nards! And if you don't know what that's a reference to, it's actually from Monster Squad. I watched that a lot when I was a kid, and I still have the VHS in my old house. So it's a great classic film. If you're lucky, you might be able to watch it on Amazon, or if you want to just order it and buy the DVD, that's cool too. It's a great film, great for children who want to get introduced to Dracula, Werewolf, Here's our bra. Alright, we've activated the bra. And our last puzzle piece is this life preserver. There we go. Cool, I heard the tick. All right, so my fellow camp counselors, I will see you in the next video, hopefully with some more friends. But for now, we're gonna leave. Close the door behind us. And voila, we got a full straight line right now. Look at that. All right, I think we have four more bloody red and moon runes to unlock. So, hmm, what should I go for next? Uh. Oh. You know what, I think I'm going to go for the conservatory first. Ladies and gentlemen, I will just admit that my theory about, you know, Jason Voorhees, Elias Voorhees, and Pamela, and how we are Pamela Voorhees was wrong, because Pamela Voorhees is lying beneath the ground. She's here, she's dead, she's at rest, 1930 to 1979, so... So as I was saying before I activated the switch, this is going to take place, this whole game takes place after the events of the first film, as proven by this tombstone, and possibly after the events of all the films. I don't know if Jason X is going to make it into the game, but we'll see what happens. Close the door, and voila, we have another symbol done. First we go to Corey was here, 86. Should zoom in any moment. Let me get a little closer. Or Court was here, there we go. Court was here, 86. Alright. And the Jarvis family history. Alright, so those are the two puzzle pieces which can be unlocked in this room. So look at our bloody red moon, bloody demonic rune board. I have so many different names for this board, it's great. We have one more piece remaining. And that piece is in the Jason room. Now without further ado, the last puzzle piece. And this was a reference to Friday the 13th Part 2, a double bed kill. Gosh, you wouldn't want to be those two in the morning. But yes, in Friday the 13th Part 2, two camp counselors were, you know, going to town in the bed, and Jason snuck up behind them with a spear, and speared them both. And that was the end of that. So I'm going to close the Jason room. Oh, and before I leave, I just want to point out one quick thing. Please pay attention to this wall. This wall back here. Alright, you see a wall. It's all chained up. It's just a wall. And you're probably wondering, Mad Eye, why, why are we looking at a wall? You know, the wall is not important. But I'm telling you it is. Because some cool stuff is about to happen. 
So this is the end to the mystery behind the virtual cabin. And as you see here, we have an option to press E. The demonic rune board has been lit up, and it makes a V. And I'm assuming this is V for Voorhees. Like, A is for Apple, but V is for Voorhees. So, let's press A. <laughs> Ooh. The center is lit up, and the Jason room has automatically opened. I did not open the Jason room myself. It just opened for me. We head downstairs... And ah, oh, a secret room. Let's check it out. Cool. All right, I'm pretty sure this is a reference to Friday the 13th, part two. You know, Jason at this point has recovered his mother's head and made a little shrine to her. He's got a machete right here. We have one victim. I can't remember which victim this was, but it looks creepy. It's mummified. It's disgusting. Wow. There's great details. Now, I've looked around this room for puzzle pieces, but all I've discovered was the head of Pamela Voorhees. So we stare at it, see what happens. Fix it just a little more. Here we go. That's my boy. Jason! What's up, my man? There's the killer. Wait, wait, wait. Don't, don't, don't. I'm your biggest fan! No! He's killing me! You and your friends are dead. Game over. You are the 57th player to die by Jason. Okay. So, according to some YouTubers, this was a reference to the first Friday the 13th game. And this is one of the texts that pops up. Game over. You are the 57th player to die by Jason. So, 57th player, in case you guys are wondering why does it say 57th, I am the 57th player in Steam who has a key to the virtual cabin that finished the virtual cabin. So that's the end of the game. You die by Jason Voorhees, and if you're connected to the internet, the game will record your ID and give you a number based upon the order at which you complete the cabin. So I'm number 57, and if we hit continue, you completed the virtual cabin. VC completed 57. This badge will transfer over to the main game. Awesome. So we're gonna have badges in Friday the 13th, the game, I don't know if this means we're going to get a badge for killing Jason, or for surviving so many matches, or using so many weapons, or escaping in so many different ways, but we're getting badges, and that's so cool. I love- I just- I love it. It's fantastic. So I'm number 57. And if we quit to the main menu... We press start again. We can still go back into the cabin. And our little demonic V should still be lit up. We head on back. And voila! We still have our V, it's lit up, and that's that. So as you can see here, not all of the runes were lit up. And that could possibly mean that we're gonna get more bloody red runes to find throughout the next couple updates in the virtual cabin. But the developers of the game, Gun Media and Ilphonic, have said that they're trying to focus on the game. <clears throat> the game is supposed to come out this fall, and, you know, it's already the middle of September. And you only have a few months left, so if they're trying to end the Virtual Cabin, and there will only be maybe a few updates remaining, I totally understand. But what do you guys think? Did you like the puzzle? Did you like, you know, how the letters, or the symbols spelled out a V? You know, did you wish the entire Bloody Red Moon board could be lit up? You know, what did you think? Now, I personally love the puzzle. I thought the V was really genius. It was great. Now, I wish we could find more symbols and there were more puzzles to find, but overall, this was a great game. I liked it. A good intro to Friday the 13th, the game. And, you know, to get killed by Jason was pretty sweet as well. So yeah, leave a comment below. Tell me what you thought about this little mystery of the virtual cabin. And yeah, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Oh, and by the way, 
There's going to be some new content coming your way. I got back from the Tokyo Game Show. I have a couple videos to upload. You can see me playing some indie games. And I also have a new kind of video, which I'm going to surprise you all within the next week or two. So stay tuned for more, and I'll see you next time. Have a good night, folks. See ya.